Hello and welcome back to Muscle Mondays with me, Madison Lee. I am creating these videos to help massage therapists, personal trainers, or any individual really who would like to get more familiar and educated on their body, the muscles, and what we can do to help relieve tension and reduce stress in our bodies by working on these muscles. Uh, so this week we're going to get into our scalenes. It's a really fun muscle group. Um, and we're going to be keeping in the neck. So if you're following along, we're going to have even more neck opening goodness this week. And basically there are three major groups here. Uh, we have our anterior scalenes, and that means closer to the front side of the body. We have our posterior scalenes, uh, meaning closer to the posterior or back side of our bodies. And then we have our middle scalenes, and those are going to live um, easy enough to remember in between those two, in the middle. Um, so these muscles are a really fun group. Um, we use them a lot and they're a really great way for us to break up tension because, I mean, face it, who couldn't benefit from a nice little neck massage? And especially if you are watching this video and you're doing it on yourself, definitely remember that everyone will appreciate a nice neck massage as long as you ask and get consent first. Um, whether it's your mom, sibling, um, your significant other, they'll be able to benefit. So what you learn here today, go ahead and try it out on other people as well and see what their reaction is, see if it's the same as yours. I know for me, I get huge stress relief just from even activating the muscles and taking nice deep breaths in and being able to move some of that tissue and it gets the lymphatic fluid moving as well. But we'll keep it simple today. Um, so basically introducing ourselves to these muscles, what do they do? Um, so the scalenes are very simple and some of them cross over from what our sternocleidomastoid muscle was doing last week. So when we use both sides of our scalenes at the same time, so bilaterally, it will flex the head and the neck. And also they elevate the ribs during a forced in inhalation. So this is my most common way of using it because I'm a big like... <sighs> type of person and you saw how we're moving our body when we take a nice deep force inhalation our ribs are elevating that's our scalenes working and when we're using them one side at a time they will laterally flex the neck just like that i do this a lot too it feels nice i encourage you to follow along we're letting our ear fall towards our same side shoulder just gently. And as well, when we're using one side at a time, it'll rotate the head and neck to the opposite side. So when I turn my head to the right, it is actually the scalenes on the left side of my body that are creating that movement because we are moving the muscles closer to each other, if that makes sense. Um, to further explain that, let's see. Pop our little hair up for a minute. Who knows if it'll stay? There's a lot of it. <laughs> um, so basically, let's go ahead and talk about the origin insertion of these muscles. Um, so our origin of these muscles, they're actually, I mean, there's three groups, but we'll just talk about in general. They are starting right up here at the transverse processes, so the little like bumpy bumps of our vertebra. Attaching in there. And it goes all the way down to the seventh. So um, they're really filling up this area. And of course there's other muscles in there as well, but the scalenes are a really great one for us to work in. Um, you know, for me, this is one of my favorite massage moves. And we're gonna see here how this is the muscle that's being most affected there. Um, and they come in and our anterior and our middle scalenes are attaching into our first ribs. They tuck under the clavicle and the posterior scalene travels a little bit different and it fills in and attaches at our second scalene. I mean, our second rib, sorry. Um, so basically let's go ahead and get into feeling these muscles out. So take a little oil. You can use any oil, lotion works too. Um, I mean, water, <laughs> you know what I mean? Something that'll help you smooth this, the hands over the skin. You know, it's a really interesting thing that I learned um, 
in school was if people don't want to use oil or lotion so people have like a you know not i guess a phobia to some degree but you can actually use cornstarch and it glides over the skin in a really similar way to an emollient but i'm a big like hydration lotion oil girl so um i just use whichever oil i feel like smelling that day um, but coconut oil is a really good go-to i'm a little sensitive to that so definitely like patch test on like you know some of your sensitive skin to see how you'll react. Olive oil, I think is really nice. It's like a, a heartier oil. Um, but basically we have our oil. We're just gonna gently warm and coat the area that we just talked about. So fun thing with what we did last week with the sternocleidomastoid is our anterior scalene lives right behind that. And so if you pop your fingers up to the little bumps of your cervical spine and let your fingertips just sink in as they pull down towards your clavicle, which is your collarbone, you're gonna feel that's the muscle belly of most likely your anterior as well as those middle scalenes. That posterior scalene is tucked between our traps, which is a big muscle in our back, but you'll be able to feel so like if you bring your shoulders up towards your ear and you'll feel like a big kind of sheet or shield of muscle, just pop right in front of that. And that's gonna be where we have our little posterior scaling. Ooh, mine's crunchy, a little like bumpy. It's not amazing, <laughs> but it's nice that we're working on it here. So you'll be able to feel in all of that good stuff. So really what we're doing here is warming the muscle. So do nice big kind of oval sweeps of the hand. And as we talked about before, fascia is thixotropic. What does that mean? It means that as it warms up, it becomes softer, more malleable. And that for us means by warming up this tissue, these nice circles that's bringing warm blood flow, nutrient dense, oxygen rich blood flow to the area. And that's going to warm the body because our blood is nice and warm. So when we're working on these muscles, we're actually going to be able to have more effective change in the actual muscle and fascia. So we see like a nice light pinkening. So like skin gets a little pink. Just a little pigment change. Um, it's noticeable on, on all the skin types, skin tones. There'll be a little texture change and you can actually feel physically it's warmer than the side you weren't working on. So when you feel you've got it nice and warmed up, not irritated, but like a nice warm sensation, like you rubbed it. Um, we're gonna go ahead and take our fingertips right up. I'm gonna use the same side hand. So right married it to those little vertebra. So finding those little guys like that. Let's take some time to warm this side too, since we're going to work on both. So those nice big ovals again, warming this tissue. Honestly, just this like level of, it's probably like a two or three pressure. This warming is so important because you know, sometimes you'll be sitting, I mean, maybe before COVID, but you'd be sitting at like a desk and someone will come up and just immediately start working on your shoulders and it doesn't feel good, that's because we're missing this like really integral step. Cool, so we got some warmth there. We're gonna take our fingertips, boop, and I'm just pressing them right against the vertebra, so the little bumps out of my spine, and I'm gonna walk that up to the top. And so each of my fingertips is pretty much set on top of one of the bumps of my spine, and just let the fingertips fall about a half inch maybe even a quarter inch onto the side. So we're no longer pressing, we don't ever wanna put pressure directly on the spine. So we're not pressing on the bones, but instead our fingertips are really like nicely digged in, digging in to the muscles on either side of the vertebra. And I have my elbows up, taking a nice breath in and exhale. I'm pulling the elbows down towards my waistline. And that's effectively dragging my fingers through those nice scalenes. Boop, love that. I would do three or four of these. And 
one more. So I'm starting to notice a little tender trigger point in the middle and posterior scaling on this side. So what I'm gonna do is find that little point, dig my fingers in, and now I'm using more pressure. So when we're going like this, whoop, we're at about a three or a four, working our way through, warming through there. But for this one, I'm gonna find that little spot that was kind of tender. I'm pressing my fingertips in, and in order to give myself a little bit more pressure, I'm gonna bring my other hand to that elbow and let that pull down. And we're just gonna keep going back and forth over that area and play around with moving your head to either side. Dusty's sad that he's in here, I guess. He's making a little cry noises. Perfect. So effectively what's happening there is we're making little circles with our hand, but instead of having to do all of that pressure from the same hand, we're just pushing into the muscle and using this other arm kind of as like a steering wheel. And I'm moving our head around to see if that opens. And when you find a really tender spot, you can always just set it there bring your other hand to support because it can be kind of hard to press into there for a whole minute or three minutes. You just press. And just like with foam rolling, you would like to hold this for about 30 to 90 seconds. And it's important that we don't do both sides at the same time. A little movement like this is always nice too. We're just moving our head back and forth, but you wouldn't want to put pressure on both sides at the same time because you can make yourself lightheaded by cutting off some of that blood supply. A lot of common sense stuff in there, but I don't need you guys passing out. <laughs> and so you'll see, same thing here. Beautiful. Feels really good. So if you're going to work on that, I mean, that warmed up so much, you might even notice. So in this case, just by releasing some of those muscles there, our chest should be able to kind of go to a more relaxed, regular state um, that feels more comfortable for us. Take a nice deep breath in, exhale. I love doing this. Um, if you're in a public spot, it's not the best, but it feels so good to take a nice deep breath in and audibly sigh it out. <sighs> you can do all kinds of like noises, especially if you're on your own. You can let yourself almost get carried away with it and you are releasing and moving a lot of energy around in your body, um, which is another great way to push that lymphatic fluid. Everything that I like to focus on involves boosting our immune system naturally and letting the lymph system work effectively is great. And deep breathing is a really helpful way to boost that flow. And so the nice deep breaths in and deep relaxing sighs is gonna move a lot of that energy and fluid around for us, especially with opening up these scalenes here. Um, if you've been following around, uh, fo following along, I would love to know if you notice like immediate more relaxation um, in your body and if you have any fun things that you like to play around when it comes to massaging your neck. But as simple as that, if you're working on someone else, nice pulls from the top of the spine down towards the collarbone. Be careful of people's throats. But it's just these really nice, smooth movements like that. And then you can even boop, give you a massage. <laughs> Tapping, pushing in, and back. Hope that helps um, you be able to understand how you would effectively do this work on another person. But even if you're just using it for yourself, I hope that you get a ton of benefit and you feel amazing. Um, and if you have any questions or if anyone has any suggestions for next week's muscle, um, let me know. Eventually we are going to get into some muscles where we can do some strengthening for them as well. But when it comes to muscles in the neck, I think release and reduction of the tension there is the best way that we can use our energy. And yeah, I hope you enjoy.